Welcome to Web Certain TV. I'm Gemma Houghton. Today I'm here with Shaji Abusala, who is head of sales and marketing for Sharjah Hotels, a halal friendly hotel chain. Today we're going to be discussing halal and Islamic tourism, what exactly the industry is and how it's developing. Hi Shaji, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Pleasure. So could you just tell us a little bit about what's, what's meant by the term halal tourism and also Islamic tourism? Okay, it's very very interesting question. I mean, halal is a part of Islamic tourism. First of all, let me say halal. The word halal means permitted in Arabic. Mm -hmm. Halal means permitted and haram means not permitted or restricted, mm -hmm. completely restricted. Um, halal tourism stands for definitely Muslim travelers who are uh, traveling across the world and who, can, who uh, need to practice the culture and religion while they don't want to compromise with other part of the facilities and amenities which they expect from a usual hotel brand. Mm -hmm. Shaza Hotels was formed in 2007. We found there's a niche and potential requirement for those kind of travelers who travel around the world while uh, they want to stay in a luxury environment. While, uh, meanwhile, they also want to practice their religion. It doesn't uh, um, allow them or what, what we say, I mean, doesn't uh, Right to say it, right to say the right word. Um, uh, make them like a uh, uh, um, refrain from doing uh, what the religion mm -hmm. tells. Uh, plus, it's it's all a matter of uh, comfortability. I mean, they what they think like uh, uh, the food is halal. There is uh, um, halal friendly amenities, for example. I think is out of the pork or restricted materials. Um, you you have prayer signages in the room. Um, or at least certain facilities to, to, to facilitate their prayer. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean that you brand a full religious <laughs> hotel, yeah. but at least to, 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 uh, to practice their uh, uh, culture and religion. So that's what we are also aiming. Um, uh, and Islamic tourism is all about um, the religion itself. And halal is a lifestyle, it's a choice. Um, so the two don't necessarily go hand in hand. Doesn't need to, to merge. But uh, you can say it's a part of, I mean, halal tourism can be a branch out of, of Islamic mm -hmm, tourism, of in my view. Um, uh, but while Islamic tourism has a lot of uh, 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 spectrums and dimensions, and it completely relates to the religion itself. So when you say religion itself, it has a lot of checklists to, to, to follow. Yeah. And as a commercial establishment, it won't be that easy to follow that whole checklist. While yeah. the simple thing we can do is to facilitate their basic needs of a Muslim yeah. traveler. And that's where halal tourism comes into play. And we don't call it, um, I mean, say halal friendly. So yeah. that bit more, you know, <laughs> yeah. we facilitate them. We are more friendly, a Muslim friendly, halal friendly is all the same. Yeah, absolutely. And the, um, the Global Muslim Travel Index 2017, that listed that Muslim travel and Islamic travel is, is the fastest growing travel segment. Yeah. So what's driving that growth and what do you think are the biggest opportunities for you know, hotel brands and other hospitality brands to really capitalise on it? Um, see, there the are many um, drivers. Um, I would say the, the global Islamic financing, the Islamic banks, um, they're also growing tremendously mm -hmm. uh, because there were no awareness before on uh, in this uh, uh, Islamic banking sector. Now every country have and every bank is starting this Islamic banking to facilitate again the same customer yep. segment. They need to invest, so they need to diversify their investment portfolio and in halal uh, spectrum itself mm -hmm. uh, to invest halal and uh, to take uh, the halal money back. So they're also finding niche potential in, in diversifying their investments all over the world. So hospitality is one of the key. Mm -hmm. Second thing is the growing economy uh, of uh, traditional Islamic belts. So for example, Indonesia, their uh, uh, GDP is growing uh, marginally in that region. Mm -hmm. Pakistan. Yeah. So there are a lot of growing economies in the traditional Islamic markets, Nigeria. Um, GCC is a given market. I mean, they've been there, yeah. uh, even though they just constitute three percentage of the global travelers. Thirty-seven percentage of the global travel spend is coming from uh, GCC travelers. It's a very interesting study. Wow. Um, in London, in 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 in, in 
most of the European parts, mainly predominantly London and uh, UK and, 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 and Switzerland, you could see that most of the hotels are actually reaping the benefits of uh, uh, this halal friendly uh, mm -hmm. offers that they're giving. Um, so coming back to your question, there are a lot of drivers, but I would say definitely this growth in the Islamic banking, Islamic financing, mm -hmm. as well as the, the growth in certain economies in the world, uh, which are traditional Islam, Muslim markets or Muslim countries, they both constitute. And of course, the kind of key to the key focus of what you need to do as a brand is, is create that environment, like you said, this halal friendly environment, this yeah. environment that makes um, travellers feel like they're going to be able to be comfortable and, and, and themselves and, and do what they need to do. But in terms of the marketing strategies, in terms of how you reach these travellers, mm. what are they looking for and what kind of channels and messaging is, is going to be the most effective to reach them? Interesting. You know, um, there were many studies um, in this area uh, in halal tourism. There are uh, companies who are specialized in researching sorry, uh, researching in halal tourism aspects. Thomson Reuters, a global consultant, recently had a very interesting study about this halal tourism. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I would say they are one of the uh, most independent organization because others were more of in, who are working in this industry doing the research. But as an independent consultancy, yeah. Thomson Reuters had a very interesting research which showed um, some key elements of what this is, uh, basic necessities of a Muslim traveler. Mm -hmm. Now, being Muslim, let's say maybe 70% of the Muslims are, we call it silent travelers, which means they're not so picky about I want this, I want that kind of, but they would prefer if that facility is being provided, they would definitely prefer it as the first choice, mm -hmm. but they're not picky. They travel to London, they book any hotels they like, but if one hotel is offering their need, they would definitely go for that hotel. Mm -hmm. Rust 30, let's say they are the most, I mean, they, they stay with the religion and uh, they choose the hotel. If if the hotel is serving alcohol, they rather they stay in an apartment. Mm -hmm. So those kind of people. Yeah. Let's focus on the 70% of the silent travelers. Okay. The Thomson Reuters pointed out three key elements. The first one is food. Yeah. Definitely. They, uh, uh, 68 percentage of the Muslim travelers uh, wanted halal food mm -hmm. available. This halal food is also kind of a cultural aspect because uh, many part of the world, even though you are not a strict Muslim, I mean, I'm not talking from the religious point of view because uh, uh, there is no uh, moderate Muslim and there is no conservative Muslim. Muslim yeah. should be Muslim <laughs> as per the religion. Yeah. I'm not talking religion here. But as a practice of religion, as a choice of lifestyle, 67% um, of this traveler said, we definitely want uh, halal friendly, uh, mm -hmm. or sorry, the uh, meat is halal, or the food is halal. The next class said price, which is a global travel, yep, fine. So that's, that's common with any other global mm -hmm. traveler. Third was privacy, mm -hmm. and safety and security, which can be also said, or the Muslim friendly, uh, how we call that, uh, uh, facilities, for example, uh, uh, ladies want the maybe a separate time zone or time sorry a time um, for using the gym or or, or uh, where they don't want to mingle with other uh, men um, or they want a swimming pool timing reserved for ladies only mm -hmm. time so they can so um, this all other small little things which a hotel can do rather creating two swimming pools for <laughs> this yeah. equipment. If, yes, if you're a luxury hotel like Shaza, we do that. I mean, we designed the hotel for that yeah. particular segment. But these small little things they're expecting, a, a prayer area, or mm -hmm. at least in the rooms to provide a prayer mat and a direction to, to the Qibla, saying this is the play, you know, area where you should. Um, having Quran, keeping Quran in the rooms, it's all already, you have nowadays smartphones, you can know, you know, yeah. <laughs> to read the Quran and everything. But the basic, thing we found out is uh, privacy, definitely, mm -hmm. um, and the food. These two things yeah. can make a big impact. And hotel doesn't have that much of investment requirement to do this yeah. facility, but yeah. they can attract a major share, which is 24% of the global travelers, actually, yeah. you know. And by sh yeah, showing a, a will to try and accommodate them to be aware of their needs, that's yeah. going to go a long way to you know, making them choose your brand over another one. Exactly. Uh, uh, see, uh, 
less than one percentage of the Jewish population or the kosher community. Yeah. Most of the airlines put kosher meal in their in their menu. Yeah. Why? Because they also want to reach out to that segment. Yeah. So it's simple as that. People think halal needs to go through a certification. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's true. If you want to be a sh Islamic uh, or Sharia, that's the right word to say that is Sharia, yeah. uh, is that is the Islamic law. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need to go through a consultancy. You need to go to certification. But to give these basic communities what a to say halal wants, friendly. Yeah, that's it's halal friendly. Exactly. You are trapping into a huge market actually. Yeah. And, and, and very cleverly, many of the UK hotels like Dorchester, I mean, I can give a list of mm -hmm. hotels in, in Switzerland. Even Kempinski has some hotels in China. They, uh, 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 in Japan is doing tremendous job in, in promoting mm -hmm. halal friendly uh, facilities in the, in the destination. So, yeah, it's, it's a matter of just changing perception a bit uh, <laughs> to attract yeah. and, and doing a basic facilities, which doesn't cost anything extra. And what are on the other side of this are the kind of pitfalls or the potential mistakes that especially Western brands can maybe make when trying to approach this, this segment and not quite understanding them or, or getting it wrong? Okay, for example, I will say, um, again, the word halal um, is perceived by different people in a different way, mm -hmm. even within the Muslims. Okay? Yeah. Um, for example, Muslims from South Africa. Uh, they would say they need to cut that meat or they, they want to slaughter the animal in a separate, in a, mm -hmm. in a certain way. Some Muslim says, yes, that is that is basic uh, of everybody agree to that common yeah. benchmarking. Right, some says you can't mix the utensils which cook the um, non-halal product and halal product in the same utensils. Yeah. Some are tolerant to that. So, I mean, there is no one fit size for all, but basically, a hotels, what the mistake they do is, they buy the halal meat, certified meat, and cook and give it and put a sign. Uh, majority of the people would say, is it a halal kitchen? Mm. Do you have a halal kitchen? Um, why halal kitchen? Because the utensils or the, the kitchen mm -hmm. amenities are not been shared with other things. And which is uh, not a big deal. I mean, you can have, uh, I've been to many of uh, these halal friendly hotels do, while doing my research and it's very interesting. They have a certain staff dedicated uh, and certain, it doesn't mean it should be a Muslim <laughs> chef, but I'm trying to say it's like he's dedicated for that halal mm -hmm. kitchen. It's a small portion of the kitchen where his own or her own utensils has been used to serve and cook and, yeah. and uh, deliver that food. So that is must. I mean, otherwise it's kind of a, uh, people would say, a Muslim traveler would say, okay, buying a meat and you cook it with non-halal stuff mm -hmm. becomes it's not halal. I mean, it's, it's a haram, which is the opposite of halal. Mm -hmm. So hotels should think about that. Um, second thing I would say, uh, the privacy and security. Uh, Muslim travelers, well-traveled people doesn't care. Uh, there, I mean, there should be private dining rooms in, inside the hotels or those kind of stuff. But giving utmost privacy to them. Why? Because the families, it's a culture of Arab culture. It's not just a religious, cult, a religious culture. It's part of Arab culture where they don't want to be exposed to uh, other crowd, I mean, their wives or their uh, yeah. daughters. Um, so better if they have areas where, you know, uh, they, would, uh, they would sit uh, in, a, in a private corners in mm -hmm. restaurants. It's very small little things which they can do. Uh, inside the rooms, uh, the product they use and amenities they use, uh, which is alcohol-free, um, yeah. mini bars. Uh, for example, most of the Arabs doesn't want the kids to uh, encounter us at, uh, uh, or or get uh, exposed to the alcoholic part in the room. Mm -hmm. So, a small questionnaire before arrival, a pre-arrival questionnaire or a checklist mm -hmm. asking, do you want to re remove the mini bar? Which, like most of the OTAs, started doing it now. Yeah. You want to remove them. So these kind of small little changes or small little uh, arrangements can definitely uh, uh, get into tap this uh, market uh, well. But uh, if you ask me what is the big pitfall is buying uh, halal meat, certified meat and cooking it <laughs> along non with <laughs> non-halal thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that becomes <laughs> completely boring. Defeats the point, <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And from the marketing side of things and the digital side of yeah. things, if you're for brands thinking, right, we want to reach out to this, these customers maybe traveling from the you know, GCC countries, mm. what are the most effective channels to use? How do these, these travelers you know, search online? How do they make their decisions? Definitely the, uh, 
new age digital media is, of course. They search trip advisors and those kind of mm -hmm. uh, mediums to check the legitimacy of their halalness or halal or friendly offerings. Mm -hmm. Here, you, the most important thing you have to understand is 24% percentage of the youth or the millennial travels are Muslim travelers. And the increased, um, how we call it, increase in the faith, maybe, uh, I will not say increase in faith is because maybe the growing economy of certain countries so that travelers which are more close to their faith is also getting increased. Mm -hmm. um, These people really wanted to choose um, a place where that facilitate their, their religion, right? Mm -hmm. These are the people who are really looking into those kind of digital media where, where we can find the halal. And there are a lot of um, OTAs and suppliers started getting into this market saying, we certify this hotel as halal. And uh, if you see the, the traffic towards this OTAs who mm -hmm. are particularly serving halal hotels only, it's, it's amazing. When we, when we uh, conceptualized the brand Shaza, we thought of staying in the, just at the luxury environment, very sophisticated travelers, well-traveled mm -hmm. Muslim traveler. But when we started um, building the hotels and having dialogues with our different investors and stakeholders, we found there's a huge potential for the millennial travelers. Mm -hmm. So we had to open our second brand called MISC for the millennial travelers. Um, the ever-evolving uh, culture of Arabs they don't want to be stereotyped as an Arab because they want to get out of that stereotypic yeah. Arab. We are young, we are modern, as good as any other <laughs> citizens of yeah. the world. We are the global citizen, we are traveling, uh, especially the increasing women travelers, you mm -hmm. know, among this from the Arab countries. So what they want, they want a gym, they want uh, all the basic facilities, What? Uh, but they don't want to pay for the frills or they don't want to pay for the extra, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So there is a huge demand of millennial travel staying in a very good upscale hotel while that hotel is still uh, providing these halal facilities. Mm -hmm. And these people can be reached out easily through digital media. Um, the advocacy of a brand or, or a hotel who is, which is serving halal environment mm -hmm. is definitely being uh, communicated through the customer groups. I mean, they are, they are all connected through mm -hmm. various other channels, maybe in, in halal um, friendly uh, platforms. But there is no unified uh, 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 what I call platform to reach out to this particular segment. Mm -hmm. But there are multiple layers where uh, we can reach out to them through social media, definitely. Social yeah. media uh, is conquering the world and definitely that's the biggest medium we are using in yeah. our hotels to talk to that targeted market. So what would be your kind of final couple of really key tips for any brands that are starting to, you know, look into this segment? How do you, you know, where, where should they start and what, what can they do to really capitalise on the opportunity? I just touched based on that when I was during our period conversation, but I would like to reinstate. It's a growing economy. It's a growing opportunity. It's uh, a lack of awareness is there, but there are a lot of players coming into this segment. A lot of brands are actually entering. But when you do that, you should understand the pulses of, or the pulse of, uh, uh, you should understand the pulse of a, a, a halal or Muslim traveler. Um, don't stereotype that product mm -hmm. and say, <laughs> yeah. you know, or just don't um, ignore it, say, thinking, oh, it's a lot of complications. It's very simple, but when you do it, do it right. Yeah. Um, do proper the, research. Yeah, and you do proper research. There are a lot of consultants available in the market too. And it's not a huge rocket science. It's very simple, three, four elements. I mean, you're just particularly, but particularly uh, targeting the major uh, consumer group. Mm -hmm. um, if you're targeting the very niche uh, uh, consumer group of Muslim travelers who are very much into uh, uh, how you call that, uh, the religious spectrum, no, mm -hmm. then you don't need to, you can avoid them. But there's a huge uh, spectrum of Muslim travelers who are okay to be with uh, in, a, in, a, in an environment where there's a bar, is there, mm -hmm. but if you can exclude their, uh, their living uh, requirements, or for example, the rooms without mini bar, or uh, food which have halal corner, yeah. basic simple things can make a big change. Mm -hmm. And that would be the edge 
for your brand over the existing brands in the world or existing hotels or the competition among, mm -hmm. among, among your city. Um, but exactly when you say, uh, when you do it uh, right, you will have all the chances of you know, getting the trust of that customer. Great, so a lot of great opportunity. It is a great opportunity. Yeah. It's a, 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 we would say in my management terms, it's a blue ocean actually. Yeah. It's still a blue ocean. <laughs> Excellent. Well, hopefully, I'm sure your tips today will be helping some people oh, to definitely. capitalize on that. Thank you very much for so. sharing that. Thank you so much for this time. Thank I mean, you. appreciate the way let's all uh, put together our efforts in uh, creating an awareness into this uh, market, very potential market. Great. Thank you so much for Thank your time. You. Yeah.